Hi everyone, Mega Shorts here, bringing you a brand new Marvel Legends action figure review. And in this review, we're going to be taking a look at one of the figures from Hasbro's Builder Figure Mumbaku Black Panther Movie Wave. And this is the Ulysses Claw figure. Now, I got this figure recently from In Demand Toys, along with all the other figures from this wave for $139.99 altogether. Now, Claw may not have been the main villain of Black Panther or Age of Ultron, but he certainly stole the show whenever he was on screen. So being a big fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and just a very passionate collector of figures from the Marvel movies, this was pretty much a must have for me, perhaps um, maybe even more so than some of the other figures in this wave that a lot of people are more excited about. And I also think it's just nice to see a figure of Andy Serkis with his likeness because he's played so many other characters in other films that I've seen over the years that I've absolutely loved. But those characters have, for the most part, been covered in CGI, so his likeness has only just about come through. So it's pretty good to see a figure of Andy Serkis as himself, but obviously in costume as Lelicia's Claw. Now the costume of this figure is certainly a lot different to those that we normally see in the Marvel Legends action figure line, but the design of Claw himself in the movie and for this figure does stay true to the comics somewhat because it does still feature his trademark arm cannon, which comes in two different forms of this figure. And we also get a pistol accessory as well as a piece of the build and figure Mumbaku wave figure. Now the packaging for this figure is more or less the same as that of most other Marvel Legends we've seen recently. At the top, we get the Marvel Legends logo. Below that, we have the figure and its accessories, including the Mumbaku Builder figure part in a clear plastic bubble. Then towards the bottom, we get the name of the figure as well as the Black Panther logo. On the sides, we get a nice bit of artwork of Andy Serkis as Claw, which is the same picture that is used on the back with him equipping his arm cannon. In the top right corner, we also get a little bit of info about him. Then towards the bottom, we get pictures of all the other figures in this wave which are also labelled with the parts that they come with for the Mumbaku figure. Then at the bottom we get the same usual product and company information. And that's a quick look at the packaging and now we're going to start taking a look at the Ulysses Claw figure. So with this figure being so different to most other Marvel Legends figures that we see nowadays from both the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the comics, I think it's probably safe to say that this figure is made from mostly new parts. However, I think the legs and the shoes may actually be reused from the 2015 Builder Figure Rhino Wave Chameleon figure from the comics. Other than that, the costume and everything else, I'm pretty sure, is 100% new. And just to give you an idea of the size and scale of this figure, here we have it next to the Vibranium Charged Black Panther figure from Avengers Infinity War and the Eric Killmonger figure, which is also from this wave. We can see that he is nearly as tall as Black Panther, but not quite as tall as the Eric Killmonger figure. Now I have to say right off the bat with this figure, one of the best things about it is the head sculpt. I think Hasbro have pretty much nailed the likeness to Andy Serkis with this one. It would have been nice if for an accessory it came with a more serious looking head sculpt with something similar to his expression that we see on the pictures at on the packaging uh, but to be honest I think this head sculpt is just absolutely awesome the way it is by itself and I can definitely imagine him saying some of his famous quotes from the film with this particular expression uh, really love that um, sort of really snarky grin they've given him definitely captures his maniacal and crazy personality that he had in Age of Ultron and the Black Panther film I really like what they've done with the paintwork as well they've captured that really sort of grubby and scarred look that he has uh, around his forehead there really nicely and the hair is painted at the top with mainly dark grey but with some light grey shading over the top and it does fade quite nicely with some faint brown paint towards the back where you can see some more of his tattoos. My only gripe uh, with this head sculpt uh, just by itself is that the eyes could have been perhaps a little bit darker. I don't say uh, they need to be this much of a vibrant blue uh, but I'm not actually going to let that um, ruin my overall verdict of this figure because it's still an absolutely awesome head sculpt and that um, facial expression is just absolutely superb. So the costume is probably what makes this figure stand out from the crowd among many other Marvel Legends figures and even though it is a lot different to the other figures from the movies and the comics, Hasbro has still managed to do this really really well. The waistcoat has some nice sculpted detail all around it 
on the front you've got some buttons, some pockets, quite a few creases and if you look closely at the back you can actually just about make out some sculpted patterns on the back of it there which I've literally only just noticed. It's certainly one of those uh, parts of action figure detail that you can only really see when you actually have the figure up close. The rolled up sleeves also reveal some more of his tattoos on his right arm there which also has a sculpted bracelet on the wrist, one on the hand as well as a small silver ring there as well. I've got to say I think they've really made the arm cannon look good as well. I really like the fact that the skin tone for it is actually slightly different to that of the right arm as well. I would have thought it's the same but it is slightly lighter which does help to make it stand out and you can see that even on the closed arm cannon you can still make out the line for where it opens up as well as a few on this side as well. I think it's nice that they've given it a sort of open pose as well so it still does actually look like it's potentially ready to be used as well. The trousers are pretty good as well, uh, there isn't really much to say about them really, like the waistcoat they've been painted with a nice accurate dark blue and the shoes are also quite a glossy black with the detail of some laces on them. Now I do have a few problems with the costume on this figure, not major problems but just a few things that perhaps make the figure not quite as good as it could be. Uh, one of them is the proportions. To me something either to do with the waistcoat or the legs just looks off. Um, I don't know if it's that the legs are perhaps a bit too small, again that could be because I think they're reused from another figure or perhaps the torso piece with the waistcoat is a bit too big but from the front it just doesn't quite look right. It looks like it's meant to sit either a bit lower or perhaps be a little bit thinner. Um, from the side, it looks okay. And from the back, I'd say it looks okay. But something about it from the front, either between the waistcoat or the legs, just doesn't make it look as natural or perhaps as accurate as I think it should really. And I don't know if perhaps a few of you out there agree or disagree with me on this, but um, yeah, there's something going on there which just looks a bit off. And you also may have noticed that the shirt and the tie are all done um, on the same piece as the waistcoat, which is different to what I would have expected really. Um, I've got loads of other action figures from other TV shows and films similar to this one where this um, sort of combination where you have a waistcoat with a shirt and a tie underneath would be done on two different pieces of sculpting. And to be honest, I can see why they may have done this. I mean, it's all one piece now, so it does make the figure uh, perhaps a bit more durable if it was, if it was perhaps um, another piece below, because then that would mean the waistcoat would perhaps be a little bit easier to bend and break. Uh, but with the paintwork being quite nicely done, it does um, look fine the way it is really. And my only other problem is that it doesn't include the necklace. You could say that the shirt is quite baggy around the neck and it does close in over it quite a bit, but I still think they could have included at least part of it within the paintwork there, just below the head sculpt. Still, other than that, I think they've captured this costume really nicely. Um, the dark blue on the waistcoat and the trousers is really nice. It looks like they've done that really accurately. I love the sculpted detail of the creases on the sleeves and the texturing on the back of the waistcoat is absolutely brilliant as well. So even though Ulysses Claw may make a very different Marvel Legends figure from most of the others that we've seen from Hasbro over the past few years, the articulation is still pretty much up to par to what we'd normally come to expect from Hasbro, perhaps minus one or two points. The head has a ball hinge joint so it can look up pretty well to about that much because the neck just about stops it near the collar there can also be turned all the way around and you can also make him look down a little bit like so. Each shoulder also has ball joints so they can move outwards just about that much from the top. There's also swivel joints just below the shoulders where the arms can turn all the way around. The same could be said for the lower arms which also have a hinge allowing them to move up and down. The wrists also have the usual hinge and swivel joints so they can go all the way around. It can also pose the hands a little bit upwards and downwards as well. It doesn't have the usual ab joint that we've seen on a lot of Marvel Legends figures these days but he still has a waist joint where you can move all the way around from there and you can also get a tiny little bit of backs and forwards movement there but it doesn't really get into a fixed pose from that. 
And then for lower body articulation, the legs can move out from the waist just about that much. They can also move backwards and forwards from the top there. The thighs have the usual swivel joints, so they can turn all the way around from there. The knees are double jointed, so you can pretty much get the legs like that. You can probably get them into some sitting down or running poses quite nicely with those as well. Now, the shoes, unfortunately, do not seem to have the usual swivel joints. However, they do have the usual hinges as well as a ankle pivot. When it comes to the articulation of this figure, I have absolutely no problems with this at all. I think it's really good what they have done with the amount of articulation on this figure. It may not quite perhaps be as much as some of the other figures that we've seen from them over the past few years, but for the most part, it is pretty much up to par. Um, I'm really pleased that the head has a ball hinge joint. I know that's something that is probably very much taken for granted among Marvel Legends figures these days, but there have been quite a few over the past few years that have had far less head articulation than I've expected. A lot of them have just had a swivel joint and nothing more. So I think it's really nice that for this one, they've not just given us a swivel joint, but they've also given us a hinge as well to allow the figure to face up and down a little bit as well. Now, my only problem with sort of posing this figure has been with the legs really. These make this figure an absolute nightmare to stand. Um, even though um, they do seem to be aligned pretty well and you can uh, use the ankle pivot to help stabilize the figure a bit, uh, this figure quite often has a really bad habit of falling over even though I've just put him back down and he stood up absolutely perfectly. Virtually any other um, part of this review that I've filmed, well there you go. He falls over. So yeah, if you're gonna get this figure, uh, just know that if you do have a Marvel Legends figure display, uh, make sure you pose this figure seriously carefully because I can imagine this one definitely being a candidate for what many collectors refer to, including myself, as the domino effect where one figure falls over and then the day is ruined because all of your other figures have fallen over thanks to someone like this. So before I give my final thoughts on this figure, we're going to take a look at the accessories he comes with, starting with the equipped arm cannon. Now I'm pleased to say that the arm cannons for this figure do swap out really nicely. I've had no trouble doing that whatsoever. And this accessory is uh, absolutely awesome. It's got some fantastic sculpted detail. And it's really nicely painted with the gunmetal gray and the blue dots suggesting it is just about ready to fire. I love the way it's designed with the split um, open arm and also the um, way the arm looks there so you can see that parts of it have sort of retreated into themselves in order for the uh, main part of the weapon to come out of the arm and from me this uh, doesn't get any complaints whatsoever it's a fantastic accessory and I'm actually um, more pleased that Hasbro have decided to include two versions of the arm cannon because if I was told a few months ago that we were going to get a figure of claw from the movie I probably would have thought we'd just get him with the equipped arm cannon and nothing else although that being said we did get a swappable arm with the MCU 10 years uh, Pepper Potts figure from Iron Man 3 so they are certainly stepping up their game with accessories and swappable parts it's not all just swappable heads and uh, gun or hammer accessories these days it is swappable uh, parts like this as well which I think are absolutely fantastic certainly gives you a lot more uh, posing options and then last but not least we have his pistol accessory which is definitely the least exciting of the two accessories but it is still really nicely done it's been painted with just a solid black like the guns that come with the Eric Killmonger figure from this wave and it has got some really nice sculpted detail to it it does also fit very nicely into Claw's right hand, which does have a sculpted trigger finger, although it was a little bit diff difficult to get him into the grip where he's just about to pull the trigger. So yeah, no complaints about the gun accessory uh, from me. Um, again, this is an accessory which at first I may not have expected them to include, uh, but it is something that he used in the film. So it's nice that we not only get the two versions of the arm cannon, but also the uh, pistol as well. So overall, I think the Black Panther movie Ulysses Claw Marvel Legends figure 
is a excellent addition to my Marvel Cinematic Universe figure collection. I'm really pleased that Hasbro have stepped up their game with villain figures recently. Uh, a few years ago, we were very lucky to see even a main villain from the films, but now they're giving us the main villains as well as secondary villains from the films, like Claw here, and this is a absolutely awesome figure of him. Again, I think they've absolutely nailed the likeness with that head sculpt. The eyes could have been a bit darker, didn't really have to be um, such a bright blue, but again, that is only a minor nitpick. Uh, from a sculpt that otherwise is just absolutely perfect. I think the costume has been captured really nicely with all that sculpted detail, especially the patterns on the back of the waistcoat. The paintwork, for the most part, is done really nicely too. Again, my only gripes with this figure really come from the proportions, which I think is either a problem in the waistcoat or the legs, which again, I think may be because they are reused from another figure. And it would have been nice to have seen the necklace at least as part of the paintwork just below the head sculpt as well. So from me, the Black Panther movie Marvel Legends Lelicia's Claw figure gets a very well earned 9 out of 10. This is a brilliant figure. It's great to see Andy Serkis in a action figure form that isn't a heavily CGI covered motion capture character. And this figure does definitely make me hold out hope for perhaps a Age of Ultron variant in the future, which would be a brilliant release alongside a new Scarlet Witch variant. And what would hopefully be our first Quicksilver Marvel Legends figure from the MCU. I'd love to see that done as a free pack. And that is pretty much it for my review of the Black Panther movie Ulysses Claw Marvel Legends figure. Hope to be bringing you reviews of all the other figures in this wave at some point very soon. So if there is one figure you want to see reviewed over another first, please do let me know in the comment section below. At the moment, I'm thinking it may either be the T'Chaka or the Eric Killmonger figure that I review next. But if there are any others aside from the Builder figure Mumbaku figure that you want me to review first, because I'll do the Mumbaku figure last, please do let me know in the comments below and also feel free to share your thoughts on this figure in them as well. So yeah, hope you've all enjoyed watching this review and I'll see you in another video again soon.